Hello, everyone. Hi. Oh, it's so pretty. I love that intro so much. And I did it right. <laughs> I went from screen to intro to us. It's I love it. I love oh. it. Oh, I'm like weirdly cut off. <clears throat> Hi, Art. How's it going? Good to see you. It's good. How are you? Good, good. to see you, too. It's funny. Hi, everyone. Like, um, whenever, you know, I do show with Will right before this, we see each other for like half an hour before we start the show. But I literally get to talk to you like 30 seconds before the show starts. So when we're saying hi to each right. other, it actually it is, hey, how's it going? We it's like, a, oh. <laughs> yeah, we do that in Cinefila. Like, hey, how you doing? How's your day? Like, we haven't been talking already for half an hour. Uh, but so welcome, funny. everybody. Uh, welcome to Perception of Paints. We're back. Hello. I'm Robert. And this is Art. That's me. Get it? That's art oh, in the art cut. Also this, also over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today we are painting, oops, today I'm kicking everything everywhere. Um, today we are painting a, a Karate Kid homage to, um, because I'm missing um, Cobra Kai so much. I don't know if you if you've been watching it, Art, but I, love I it. watched the first step season and I liked it a lot. <clears throat> I just haven't made the time to watch the rest of it, but I did enjoy. It. I was so pleasantly surprised with that first season. Oh and yeah, it was. I was too. Because I was like, oh, it's a YouTube show. It's it's a throwaway. It'll just be something silly and like, but no, it was actually really good. Like, it made me super happy. I love how they they made a good balance of like, yeah, it's like cheesy like old karate stuff, but then put some weight behind it, and it was very interesting. Yeah. And it wasn't just nostalgia for the sake of nostalgia. Like you actually exactly. felt like the characters were growing and changing over time. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it so much. Um, well, season three is a uh, uh, batch of crazy and wonderful. So awesome. Once you get to it, you'll enjoy it. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be painting a version of the Miyagi-Do logo. It's not the actual logo because we're actually putting a little... Um, a little uh, kind of image of Daniel LaRusso doing the the like crane pose in there Ooh. in the tree. Yeah, okay. so it's a little different. And then today I'm also using a square canvas. What? Oh, I figured it made yeah. sense because we're doing a round, a round picture that we would use a different size canvas. So I switched that up today. Let me go back and get me a square. <clears throat> Boom. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna guide you guys step by step through this painting today. Um, and as we go through, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can pop them in the chat there and uh, let me know what's going on and how you're doing. And then also you can pop onto our Discord at Perception Paints. And you can also go to Perception Paints Share to share video of you during, um, during your paint process. And then Art can actually bring those up and we can take a look at them and you can show me or ask me, hey, does this look right? I don't know how it feels. Show it off. We'll take a look. I'm happy to take a look at it as we go. But today is just totally chill and relaxed, as you can tell by this wonderful music Art just played for us. I love it. Um, is that a good so point? yeah, let's. No, that's perfect. Let's go through materials and make sure we have what we need before we get started. First off, you'll want a surface. I've got a canvas here. I think this is about 16 by 16. Maybe a little bit bigger, but it's a square canvas. You can use canvas, paper, or if you're using this digitally on an iPad or a Surface Pro, as long as you got a nice surface, just don't paint on your iPad. Use the application. Yeah, yeah. Use use your Apple Pencil. Don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got our surface, and then next up, you will want a cup of water. I've got my dingy little cup of water here. This is uh, to wash off your brushes. As you're using different colors, you want to make sure that you're washing your brushes out thoroughly so you don't accidentally get colors mixed in there. And then you also want something to drink. I've always got some water around, um, keep it hydrated. And I keep a lid on it too, just so I don't accidentally put my paintbrush in there. It's happened many times, especially with my coffee cups in the morning. And then you will want a towel. Now I've got a reusable microfiber towel that I just wash when I'm done. Um, it's green that way, so I can just keep reusing it. But if you've got a paper towel or a napkin, uh, anything like that will be handy. And you'll want that just to make sure that you have uh, dry brushes before you apply the paint to the canvas. The reason you'll want too much water on your paintbrush 
uh, before you apply the paint is because if you do have too much water on your brush and uh, you put the brush on the canvas, the water will drip down the canvas and rip the paint off of there, especially with acrylics. That's what I'm using today. So Uber Eats. Oh no, my commercial. No, go away commercials. <laughs> Hold on, let me switch to my account. No worries. I have, I have YouTube, whatever it is. <laughs> um, got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, just as you're going through, as you wash your brushes off thoroughly with water, make sure you give them a dab with the towel, get some of that extra water off, and then you get your paint as you normally would, okay? Um, oh, hey, we got some people in the chat already. MJO, hello. Hi. And Terrence Stark, hello. Kaylee King, hi. Nice to see all of you. Um, hello and welcome back. Thank you. Oh, Lady Thank you Hound. so much. I show. saw that. The Shin of. Oh, wait. The Shino. Shino fangirl. Oh, duh. Pokemon. Got it. Um, but yes, Lady Houndoom, so nice to see you. We missed you the last couple weeks, but we're happy to see you here. Um, this is a fun one. And of course you can always check out, um, I think our previous episodes are now uploading onto YouTube. So keep an eye out Yeah, and you last can week, catch up if you missed week, any of them. Last week is definitely there and I'm up, starting to up, I'm gonna start uploading the rest backwards. I love it. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. It's a cool little library of, of our time together, Art. It's, a, yes. it's an archive of, <laughs> of... <laughs> our experiences together. Uh, I love it. Just you don't have to put the Mandalorian one up there if you don't want to. <laughs> no, I'm I'm definitely putting that one on there. <laughs> Damn. Um, and Kaylee King, also known as Pip Squeak Fifteen. Hi. Oh. Hello. Squeak. And Connie. Hi, Connie. I'm happy to see all you guys here today. Um, okay, so we've got our towels. Next up, let's do brushes. So I'm going to use a combination of four different brushes today. You can use any size or type brushes that you have available to you. You don't have to have the exact same brushes that I have. But I'll show you what I got. I have a large brush. This is my large one inch flat brush. You can see it's got its flat top there. Turn it to the side. It's got that thin edge, right? If you've been here before, you can tell I pretty much use the same brushes throughout. You really just need a good set of three to five brushes. Uh, next up is my medium sized brush. This is a half inch flat brush. Same type of brush, it's just smaller. And it's got that little flat top on there and you can see when you turn to the side, it almost disappears. So that's my half inch flat brush. And next I've got my small detailed brush. This is a number two round brush. But again, anything that's smaller and help you out with details, that'll do just fine for you. And then today, I'm using um, my little kind of stipply bristle brush to help when I'm doing the tree branches. So I pull this out every now and then. It's just got a cool, like, coarse bristle on it. And uh, Kaylee King says, makes me want to join, but I ran out of the colors you're going to use. Ugh, I just did a pour painting for a commission. Um, well, first off, glad you got a commission. Make that That's money, great. honey. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, and you know what's so funny? I actually... Um, just got a whole bunch of new paints. I went to Michael's, I actually went outside, um, double masked, terrified, but I went outside because I bought paint online and it was poor paint. It was poor bowl acrylic on accident. I didn't realize it. <laughs> um, so I opened it up and I was like, why is it all shiny and sparkly? And it's like, because it's poor acrylic. So I had to go return it. I got all new paints, which makes me happy because I was out of orange. I, I didn't realize we were gonna use so much orange during the show. So, um, Kaylee, catch us next time or watch us now and hang then out. just, yeah, hang out and you can paint it later or you can just sketch it out on a sketch pad if you want to. Um, and Reed H. Cooper, you're having a rough night. I'm sorry, bud. I hope you're doing okay. Um, painting is always a nice, uh, kind of chill stress reliever for me. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this with all y'all is because it's, a nice way to kind of bring stress levels down and chill out. And and if um, you just want to hang out and you don't want to paint today, that's also fine. You can just hang out. Yeah, totally. You can just hang out and chill in the chat and make comments and totally. Um, 
And Kaylee King, can I share my painting in the Discord? Absolutely. I hope that you all share your paintings in the Discord. I love seeing what you've all done. Um, I've been collecting them and keeping like a little photo album of everyone's work. It's been really nice. And uh, Reed Cooper says, physically, not mentally. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's different. If I could pass you to Vika, then I would. But I don't have any extra. I'm sorry. Are you trying to like sell drugs online? We what? Can't do that. No. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, you're, you're, offer, you're offering them for free. Yeah. I'm not a pharmacist. I'm just helpful. <laughs> I'm not a dealer. Not at all. And I don't partake at all. Um, anyway, so uh, next up we'll want paint, right? So I'm using three colors today. I'm actually using two, um, but a third just in case. So I've got my orange. I'm using a cadmium orange, just a nice standard mid-range orange. I'm also using a Mars black, nothing too shiny, just a standard black. And then I'm using a titanium white, just in case I need to clean up some of the edges when I'm doing uh, my shapes. I'm gonna keep that white handy as well. And then um, other than that, I think we're good to go. Um, I think Art went to go make dinner. So he'll probably be back in a little bit. <laughs> but um, before we get started, let's do a quick little toast. We'll get things going as we always do. Got my drink here. So we'll drink and we'll paint the best that we can. And if it don't turn out right, who gives a damn? Cheers. Boop. Always got to start off that painting with a little toast, kind of set the mood, right? Um, if you've never joined us before, uh, don't stress too much about the painting being perfect or exact. Your painting is going to look exactly different from mine. And it should, because it's your own painting. But we're all going to end up with something that looks like an orangish, sun-ish shape on a white background with a blackish, bonsai-ish tree with a... Um, like a Daniel LaRusso shape in it. But if yours comes off a little bit different, it's totally fine. I like Bob Ross always says, there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. And that goes for here too. You can always fix it if you need to. So don't stress. Uh, Reed H. Cooper, uh, are you caught up on Cobra Kai? I am, fortunately, but also unfortunately, because I miss it already. I love the show so much. I flew through both the second and the, th actually I f flew through all of it. Seasons one and two, were available already so I was able to watch those all together and then as soon as um, season three came out I just could not stop. Um, Shino Fangirl, I get the feeling this one's going to be tough to do in colored pencil. Hmm. It's a, it's a different technique. You can definitely do it in colored pencil. Um, the, the difference is when you get to some of the, the leaves and the texture that you see like around the sun edges, that's going to be more of like a pencil stippling rather than a pencil stroke. So I would sketch it out with pencil, maybe just a light sketch, and then stipple in some of those textures as you go. Um, but it, yeah, it would probably, not more difficult or tough, but it would take a little bit more time with colored pencil. Hi, Art. Hello. Hi, what are you having for dinner tonight? Rice and chow mein. Ooh, I love that. That sounds really good. I'm gonna do that this weekend. It's like frozen chow mein. Do that in, in, in honor of uh, of the new year. I'll get some Chinese oh, food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it's in the microwave, I'll be back. Okay. Reed H. Cooper loves season three so much. Fan service without even really being fan service. They did just what the show had to to stay true to the concept of the show. Totally. Art and I were just talking about that, how it's nostalgic and it plays to the fans, but without it being pandery, it's just, they just add levels to each of the characters. And I, I love it. I love it so much. All right. So I'm going to get started with um, our sun shape with the orange. I'm going to take my large brush, get a little bit of water on there and then dab it off just so it's damp, but not wet. And I'm going to get some orange on my brush and I'm going to start in the center 
I always like to start in center when I work with circles because um, that way your circles don't get too big too quickly. You don't want them to get out of hand. Sometimes if you're like excited and I'm gonna draw a circle and you paint a circle and then try to color it in, it usually ends up much bigger than you intended. So start small, start in the center and you can always build up, you can always add more, but it's very difficult to take the paint away. Heavy flat brush. Um, it's not super heavy. <laughs> Are you saying that I'm just super clumsy today and dropping stuff? So I'm just building out my circle little by little. So Art, this is probably the first class that we've done, or the first session we've done in, I would say, a couple of months yeah. that I've had a brand new canvas to work from. Oh. I'm usually, using, I'm usually doing uh, a, a <laughs> repainted canvas. Um, I actually, I had some of these square canvases set aside for another project, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to use the square one. Um, also, all of the paint and the canvas is on sale at Michael's right now. So if you guys need to go refill, now's the time. These guys here are buy one, get one 50% off, which is great. All their open stock paint. So I bought, I bought a whole bunch of colors that I was missing. And then um, they've got some big packs of canvas that are usually about $20 or so that are now $10. You can get oh, nice. six six 16 by 20 inch canvas for about 10 11 dollars which is really good all right so i'm gonna keep going i'm thinking no bigger than well i want to leave some room around the edges of my canvas so i would say leave at least two or three inches around i can go a little bit bigger i just don't want to fill it all the way in because i do want the edges of my sun to have a little bit of texture. Now, Art, I know you mentioned that Ryan had already taped out his circle for his son, which is totally fine. And that's definitely a way to go, especially if you want that nice, crisp, clean sun shape. Um, and, and I'm so sure it's gonna look amazing. And just so Ryan knows, it wasn't, this, is, this wasn't me writing Ryan and out. This was me no, just no, no. like this and he was ready. No, I love that Ryan was like all ready to go. And, and it's, I mean, Ryan and I have kind of chatted briefly, I think on Facebook or something, but like, especially art teachers and instructors will tell you, this is the way to do it. Like you have to do it this way, otherwise it's not good art or you're not doing it right. And it's like, no, screw that. Like you're, you're doing it the way that you want to do it. If you want a crisp, clean sun behind it, yeah, yeah that's what you got to do. And he had that in his mind and was prepped for it. So I, I applaud that. I think that's awesome. And it's proactive. He's like, I'm ready to go. Okay. That feels pretty good. I'm going to fill in just a little bit on the inside. If you've missed any of those white spaces on the inside of it. But it doesn't have to be totally solid. You could tell that there's some there's some texture in there. I'm just gonna circle it out. Um, Kaylee says she dropped her her paintings into the Captain Paints Discord. Oh, nice! Like previous paintings. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. I shared my poor paintings. Oh, your poor paintings. Perfect. Okay. Um, and I, like I said, I just bought all that pour acrylic and then I returned it because I have no idea how to do it. But I want to try it. I just know it's going to make a very big mess. So I don't have the space to do it right now. But I'm excited to see your work. That's going to be really cool. Um, uh, Shino Fangirl says, do you think the original or the Jackie Chan version is the superior film um, of, of which? Of, oh, Kid. of Karate Kid. Oh, oh shoot, I forgot there was one with Jackie Chan, um, which I guess answers that question. Um, 
<laughs> I totally forgot about that. Um, Reed H. Cooper, please drop your John Lithgow painting. I definitely want to see that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more texture using my, um, my stiff bristle brush. I'm going to get a little bit of paint on there, not too much. And keeping in this circular motion, I just want to kind of scratch a little bit on the edges. to create some of that kind of wispy sunset look around the side. And you could do this with a regular brush too. Um, just make sure that your brush is dry. I'm just gonna scratch that paint on there. You can do a couple little taps of it too to add some rough texture. But again, you don't have to do it like this. Totally make it your own. I usually buy the um, the artist loft paints mm -hmm. from Michaels, just because it's it's more cost effective, and I go through so much paint. Yeah. Um, but they don't have orange in like a, a big size like this, so oh. I, I went a little bit I went a little bit more expensive with Liquitex, but. I like the way it smells. Is that weird? <laughs> no, they smell good. It just, it smells really good. It's from France, so it's fancy. It's just a nice, it doesn't smell like paint paint. It smells like just yummy perfumed French paint. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know what it smells like. It just smells good and I like it. So Art, I'm disappointed I missed um, Cinephilia today. I was super busy at work, um, but it's it sounded like it was going to be a very, very good, important episode. So I'm going to have to watch that later. Yeah, it was good. Um, it's always weird because I was whenever we pick something that's a little like more in depth, I'm always like, oh man, how are we going to find time to fill? And then we, I'm always like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. I don't know if it's going to work. And then we ended up filling the whole episode of thinking, no, we might need to come back to this. Right. Yeah, it's when I when I turned in when I tuned in, it sounded like it was. I think you guys just started talking about Matthew or Matthew Perry. <laughs> <laughs> what are the racial implications of Matthew Perry? <laughs> um, shit. Uh, no, Tyler Perry, Tyler. which um, I I don't consider myself a person of color by any means, um, but as a queer person, I struggle with those same kind of things like uh -huh. when when there are queer tropes in film and in tv i struggle with it sometimes so i can only imagine the types of struggles that tyler perry films while they're entertaining can sometimes be uh maybe damaging i don't know if that's the right word but i, I can i can see some parallels there yeah um Shino Fangirl says, uh, but the Jackie Chan version was better. There was an actual reason for learning to integrate Kung Fu into every day, rather than Mr. Miyagi just wanting his car waxed for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to watch it. I haven't yeah, seen I've it. Yeah, I've never seen it either. That's funny. Uh, Kaylee King doesn't have a Michaels near it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's frustrating. I, um... Yeah, I don't know where you would get supplies. I always go to Michael's. Um, I don't know who else would have, a, maybe a Blick, if you have a Blick art supply near you, or um, I would say anywhere but Hobby Lobby, just because they are they don't have the most ethical of practices, but anywhere you can get art supplies, really. Um, Reed yeah. Cooper didn't even want to bring up gay tropes between me and Will. We can go forever. Yeah, I bet. There's just, there's a lot out there to work from. Yeah. Um, and Connie says, there was an integral lesson behind every chore he taught daniel son. I mean, there was. There definitely was. He just, the nice thing was he did get a free car wax. So, yeah. <laughs> and All right, so I'm going to go on there. 
Or go ahead. I was going to say, and if you, you your only option is Hobby Lobby and you have to go there because it's the only thing you get to, go get a coupon so that you can pay the least amount of money. Go on a coupon, mm -hmm. go look for like that sale when they're like 50% off. So you don't, you don't. Yeah, they don't deserve all your dollars. <laughs> yeah, they're going to take Okay, so I'm going to, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take the white paint with my bristle brush and I'm going to speckle on just a little bit to bring back some of the white texture in there. And again, you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of um, roughing it up a little bit. <laughs> bring him, Am I totally uh, pissed? Am I pissing Ryan off right now? <laughs> bringing back the white texture is also one of those racial tropes we didn't talk about. <laughs> oh shit. I said texture, <laughs> not culture. <laughs> Uh, you know what's you know what's funny, but also um, a little frustrating. I've had this conversation like three times today. Um, <laughs> it's only because it keeps coming up. But like at work, we were talking about um, we just had this big event in honor of um, like Holocaust remembrance, mm -hmm. and so people were actually telling their stories, and we had people who had survived, and their families had survived, and. Um, we got all this great feedback and one person had said like we got 30 comments and they were all great Like thank you for sharing these stories. Thank you for being brave I can't believe people had to go through this all that that you would expect and then one person was like Not having it uh, They're like we, sh we shouldn't be doing this. This is completely against civil rights and There's more to it. I'm not gonna share all of it, but yeah, essentially I was reading it like what <laughs> what what are you saying right now? Like I have no idea who this person was. It was anonymous. But it was very difficult to read that and be like, I can't believe that people think this way. But whatever. Yeah. I uh, part of the fight. I was part of a conversation about a certain industry of which I participate in, uh, where it was brought up to a large group of people that representation was an issue and every person in that in that group said nah it's not so I, was bizarre. Like, I was like okay i'm just i guess i'll just uh i'll just gonna sit over here in the corner and uh i just don't get it is it just because those people are not marginalized in any way i think so because they just they, don't understand i think so because the answer i got well well, it's not a problem. There's, there's representation. It's just that there's not enough work to go around. Like, that's the problem. Like, yeah, that's not that's not the problem. And it wasn't even in question. Like, no one said, "Hey, no. let's balance the work among people." It was, "Hey, why is there not a more diverse yeah. workforce?" It was it was slightly heartbreaking because this is a community who I think a lot. I was hoped a lot out of. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. It's too bad when you see that, mm -hmm. especially when it's it's a little eye opening in in the negative, unfortunately. Um, what's we got here? We missed some stuff. I was I was getting into soapbox mode. Sorry, gang. <laughs> um, the Karate Kid original is better because there's many Karate Kids. Oh, meaning uh -huh. like when they bring in uh, what's her face. As the other Karate Kid, oh, um, I can't remember her name. Million Dollar Baby. Yeah. Um, her. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Miyagi, Daniel, Johnny. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're actually saying like they're all Karate Kids. Uh, ooh, trip to Art Supply Warehouse. You know what, Connie? I've never been to Art Supply Warehouse oh, in, in Westminster, go. right? Yes. I've never been. Go, I really want to. Go around back to school time because it's all the sales. Oh, okay. That's great. Nice. Um, option delete says, hola. Hola. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How's it um, Kaylee King, did mine on the floor with a garbage bag layer underneath it. Oh, the pouring. Okay, that's a good idea. I might do mine outside just to make sure. I, I got in trouble for bringing glitter into the house. I can't imagine <laughs> what's going to happen, how Jared's going to feel if I bring pourable acrylics into the home. Um. Karen Stark says, I feel the Jackie Chan version was more about Jaden learning to cope with his emotions, the lessons. Jaden, oh, it's Jaden Smith. 
now it's all coming back to me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, and Will Smith is also a producer in on the TV show. Oh, he is. Mm -hmm. I think he just owns rights to it or something. Shino Fangirl says, I can say that queer tropes in media definitely had an effect on me growing up. The only representation I saw of bi people was that they just slept around. Yeah, that's a that's a really um, frustrating one. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot too. And it leads to a lot of misinformation. Yeah, Like I have conversations about that all the time. Like, oh, you're bi, you just wanna, you're, you just can't decide. You just wanna be greedy. Just, yeah, you just want everything. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Um, yeah, that's hard. That's frustrating. Some people on the A spectrum. I love it. Love it, love it. Really hope we do see the ne new Karate Kid in season four. Wait, who's the new Karate Kid? Or, I'm confused. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I'm excited about season four. Um, and yes, Hilary Swank. That's Hillary who I was Swank. thinking of. Yes. It would be interesting to see if Hillary Swank would come back for it, though. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Um, ASW is the best. Andrew Lockerbie, fill me in. I'm missing that. What is ASW? American Horror Story Washington. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. Something Star Wars? Um, I don't know. That's what I thought too. Absolute, <laughs> absolute Star Wars. It's the new flavor of absolute, absolute Star Wars. Oh man, I lost the brush. Oh, there. Art Supply Warehouse. Oh, Art Supply Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. I love it. Um, hi, Lockerbie. How are you? It's good to see you. I have to tell you, so I watched the new Star Wars um, show last week that you were um, that you were hosting so good and so fun that opening like that opening intro thing with the with the door opening like star tours and doo -doo 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 -doo, it, it was perfect <laughs> so so well done really really nice should be very proud of that um yeah like absolute vodka has a new flavor it's star wars flavored <laughs> tastes tastes like droids tastes Ew. like blue milk <laughs> <laughs> oh joanne's joanne's fabric is pretty good oh yeah they have some stuff yeah their their um selection isn't great because they're not i guess they're not really an art store but they got some good stuff yeah and they're the more fabric in the pinch you can pick yeah. up some things um oh no andrew you didn't do that <laughs> what was that who did that was it danny no, no it was me <laughs> oh, it was you! Art, that was really cool! Yeah, everything else was okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. The show was good, too. Um, it, the show was really good. Um, it may have been a misguided compliment, but a compliment all the same. I, you, you ran the show, Andrew. You did a great job. I loved it. Okay, so I'm going to take my medium-sized um, brush. And I, I'm, I'm always picking on Andrew. I don't mean to. I think you're wonderful. <laughs> I really don't mean to. It just happens. All right, so middle-sized black paint. And I'm going to start to draw the tree, but I'm going to draw the center of it first. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of sketch it out little by little. And if you start with the center of the tree, you can always build up as you go. So it's going to go up here a little bit. And then it's going to bend. And I want uh, Daniel's waist to be kind of center of the canvas there. So it's somewhere around here, center of my canvas, center of the sun. And then I'm going to arch it a little bit, keeping it very loose. And this is where that head shape is going to be. The legs, upper and lower part of the legs, and the torso and the head are going to be about the same height. So you can use that as a guide. We all know how great I am at drawing people, so good luck today, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's the base of my tree. Now, 
Here's the kind of like waist section that I've determined. This is where his legs and his um, torso are gonna meet. So I'm gonna create a little bit of a branch outward. Don't think of it too much like a person. We're just getting the illusion that maybe there's something in there. I just now realized where Daniel's son is. I did not realize that. You kept saying he's in the tree. I thought you were gonna add him to this picture and I just, I just now saw oh. that he's there. It's cool, right? Yeah. Just a little subtle, little touch to it. So then I'm bringing the other leg down there. But again, just think of it as a tree. And then a little foot. And I'm just drawing the framework right now. I'm going to build up on it as we go. So imagine the head is right here, which would mean the shoulders right about here. little bit of a shoulder to meet the elbow. And then the forearm is coming up at a bit of an angle. See where we're going with this? And then flatten that out a little bit for the hand. There we go. That's the base of our tree. Now, everything else that we're adding to this is going to be um, branches that are kind of building off. So you can see in the sample painting up there where this hand piece is, there's a branch that comes up this way, there's a branch that comes out that way. And those branches are gonna be a little bit smaller, like thinner than these branches in the base. As a tree normally would, you're gonna have some bigger, thicker, broader branches inside the tree. So just keep that in mind as you're doing it because you don't want these branches along the outside to be too large and thick to overshadow what's happening on the inside. You still want a little bit of that um, shape going on in there. Michaela says, oh man, I missed a good one. Oh, is that Michi? Hi. Yeah. You can you still, still jump in, jump. we just started. Yeah. Yeah. Orange circle. Just paint an orange circle. Ta-da, done. Paintbrush. Down. It doesn't even have to be clean. It can be a messy circle. Mm -mm. Yeah. Super rough. <laughs> I can hear Ryan in the background. Damn it. <laughs> okay, so I've got the base of my tree. I'm going to keep building up now that I've got the kind of the structure that I want. So I'm going to start with the trunk. This is going to be the thickest part of my tree. And my trunk kind of tapers out And then I create a little bit of a surface down here toward the bottom, but I want it to stay within my orange circle area. And this can be rough as you're filling it in too. Um, I almost like to take a little bit of paint on my brush each time and just kind of stroke that on there. It gives the kind of feel of a, of a traditional um, Japanese calligraphy, as if you were just doing it with a nice textured brush with soft, gentle, short strokes. fill in a little bit in here just to give it some depth but just like the orange don't be afraid to let it just get a little textury and loose um michi's never seen the original karate kid is that like a thing i should have already known um no i don't think so um, so this, what we're painting today is essentially the logo for Mr. Miyagi's dojo. Like he has his own dojo, Miyagi-do, and this is the logo that is like on the back of the gi, like the Karate Kid uniform. But we're doing a slightly different version that has the picture of the Karate Kid in the tree doing like the traditional crane pose that everyone's done since 1985. 
<laughs> um, Kaylee, it's either Joann's or Walmart. Oh, go to whatever's cheaper at that point, really. Oh, I mean, she says, I've seen Cobra Kai, but the logo looks like a crane kick. Yeah, totally. That's exactly it. We just changed up the logo a little bit. All right, so I'm building up the tree. As I'm thickening the trunk a little bit, I'm starting on the inside and little by little adding a, some paint on the left and right side of that initial line that I drew just to build it out. Because again, you want to start small. But the nice thing about bonsai trees is that they've got some cool texture to them and they also bend and twist in unique, interesting ways. So don't get too hung up on the tree being the exact perfect shape as you're going, just little by little. And you wanna make sure that the bottom of your tree is the thickest. So if you need to go back and correct any of that, you can. And just make sure that your shapes are following the lines that you that you drew to keep the general shape of this character that we're painting on the inside. Um, what do you got here? Michi. Oh, I just noticed it. Don't feel like Art said the same thing. He's like, oh, I see it now. <laughs> yeah, and I made the social um, media. I made the post. I saw this drawing like 30 times before tonight. <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. Um, and Michi, I would watch it. Totally. It would, um, having seen Karate Kid so many times and then watching Cobra Kai, it was that nice added level of nostalgia, seeing some of those characters come back to life and grow. Um, but yeah, it definitely stands on its own. You don't need to have seen Karate Kid in order to enjoy Cobra Kai. Like my sister, my younger sister is 20. and She's never seen it, but she loves Cobra Kai. Still building this out. And remember, as we're going up higher, these branches are getting a little bit thinner. to build out chest area here. It's got that little bit of an arch to it. Um, Reed Cooper says it helps. It definitely helps. Yeah, it helps, especially in season three, uh, when more of the, um, I mean, I would say tertiary characters, but they're still pretty important. There's some characters from Karate Kid 2 that come into play, um, that I think would help with the story, definitely. And they do show flashbacks, like actual footage from the movies, so you're not completely lost if you've never seen them. Ooh, so we get to see a little bit of what Ryan and Connie are doing. Nice work, gang. Those look great. 
Thanks for bringing that up, Art. Mm -hmm. um, Shino Fangirl, it's 11 p.m. here and I have to work in the morning, so I have to sign off early. Have a great rest of your night. It's so nice to see you. Thank yeah. you for stopping by. Um, I didn't realize you were, um, what is that? East Coast time? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for sticking with us when you do. I didn't realize that. Get some rest. Terrence Stark, I need to watch it. I keep putting it off. Uh, either Karate Kid or Cobra Kai. Definitely watch. Super enjoyable. Um, Reed Cooper says, the fact that the original kid on the poll actually grew up to be a well-known actress and they went and got her. So wild. Um, for, oh, for, for Karate Kid 2. I was amazed that the people who came back were were coming back. Like, I, mm -hmm. I didn't think anyone would, really. I thought it was just going to be um, the two main guys coming back and that would be it. So I was really surprised pleasantly that they were there. It just makes the show all the more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So good and gang, don't think of it too much as an actual person. Just imagine that it's a tree that you're building up little by little, and it'll kind of give the illusion as you're going. Um, and then Reed Cooper says, I think we're actually getting all of Karate Kid 3 too, and finding out why isn't Danny with Jessica either, and maybe find out how the hell he finally did settle. <laughs> <laughs> I am interested to know all of that like extra seedy stuff too. There's just so much more of the story that they haven't touched on yet. Um, there is a little, for me, I love the show, but every now and then I get the feeling that I'm watching an episode of the Power Rangers, which isn't bad. Because <laughs> I did enjoy Power Rangers, but sometimes I don't want it. Like sometimes I'm so invested in the story of the Karate Kid and what's going on that when it gets extra Power Ranger-y, I'm like, okay, all right, everyone stop fighting. I just want to know what's happening right now. <laughs> sometimes not all the time sometimes i'm all for it i'm like yes kick that girl down the stairs punch him in the face <laughs> but other times i'm like no no stop i just want to find out what's going on give me more of the drama all right so i've got the basic shape and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take just a little bit of paint still working with the black and i'm going to do some of these other branches kind of coming off. Now these are gonna be my thin branches, so keep them really small and light. You can always expand them if you need to. But start small. One of the more iconic things about bonsai trees, especially when you're painting them, is that you want to think of the tree branches actually spreading horizontally rather than shooting up and kind of filling up the sky. Like when we're kids and we're taught to draw a tree, it's draw a trunk and then put a big cloud around it, right? Mm -hmm. When you're doing a bonsai tree specifically, you want to imagine these branches are branching outward as well as upward. So focus on the outward motion first, like you see here, and then occasionally bring something up that moves up. Because you can always add more leaves to fill in upward, but you want those main branches to grow uh, out to the sides. And that's what will give it a really nice bonsai shape rather than just a typical tree.
Um, Kaylee King, I'm gonna go, but have fun and I can't wait to see what you all make. Kaylee, thank you for joining us today. See you later. Have a great night. Yeah, we'll see you next time. I'm looking forward to seeing your paintings on um, on the Discord. I'm gonna check those out. I really enjoy painting trees. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just very chill, almost meditative. Try not to overthink this one because normally I am always like I, I I start over and I redraw stuff and I'm just going. Yeah, just think of the tree. Don't even think about what's going on here anymore. Just picture it as a tree now. You add in those little spider webs of branches reaching off to the sides. getting really nice and thin and delicate as they reach up. Uh, Reed Cooper says, I have my tree, but I really don't know how to do the brushes or the bushes here. Test, test. There's no sound and I didn't mute. Oh, can you hear us now? Yeah, it's, can anybody else hear us? We were just real quiet. I wasn't for saying a while. anything. <laughs> yeah. I was very quiet. If not, refresh. Nothing's changed over here as far as I can tell there's sound. I don't know why I'm telling him this because if he has no sound, he can't hear us. <laughs> can everyone else hear us? He says, oh, <laughs> you just weren't talking. Yes, I wasn't talking. <laughs> um, how's everyone doing on their branches? Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah? OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to add some of the, uh, the leaves and the bushes there. You can do this in two ways. You probably have the same brush handy. That'll do just what you need. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. Make sure your brush is nice and dry and clean. You can use the same one. Take a dab of paint on your brush. And you're going to be stippling these branches uh, group by group. So just imagine each one is its own little grouping of plants. So I'm gonna start with this guy here. I'm holding my brush sideways so you get like the the length side of it rather than the thicker fat side 
and I'm just going to tap. And Art, maybe you can close in on this, yeah. this area here. So I can show you guys up close what we're going to do. There is that. I'm so glad that you're here, Art. <laughs> um... I lost it. Oh no! But I can bring it up here too. No, I just give me two seconds. I'm, I'll, I'll rebuild it. I'll rebuild it right now. It'll take okay. me. I'm still glad that you're here. <laughs> I'll do it here. To you from Fancy. I'm gonna grab a little bit of paint. Typically, I take from the from the tube, as you guys know, but. When I'm doing trees, I just want to have some on the side to use. So you can easily dip into it. Here we go. Ah, perfect. Okay. So I'm taking a bit of paint on my brush. You don't need a lot as you're doing this. And you're just going to tap. Think of it as a gentle stabbing. As you're building this out, as a few people, and just like we were doing, <laughs> <laughs> and as you're doing this, um, again, think horizontally. Imagine that you have a cotton ball that you're grabbing the sides and just gently pulling off to the sides. So rather than a big round bulb of branches, you're just kind of tapping out horizontally. And then you can layer on top of that so that you have some spots that are higher and some spots that are lower. But typically on the bottom of your bonsai tree, it's going to be a little bit flatter along the bottom edge. It doesn't have to be. You can add a little bit of texture there too. You can see it's very loose. So you can do it this way. You get a little bit more control if you do it this way. If you want to just kind of go crazy with it for a little bit and have some fun, you can take this uh, stipple brush, this like rough stipple brush, dip it in black paint and just kind of tap on some areas where you want branches. You're going to have far less control if you do it this way, um, but it won't take as long. So it just depends how you're feeling. If you want it to be a little more loose and rough, um, Use the larger brush. If you want to go in with a little bit more detail, use the smaller brush and take your time with it. And that is it. The end. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, no, that's the last step, technically. All we're going to be doing now is just adding on these branches for the rest of our tree. It's just taking our time and filling it in. This is a nice technique too if you want to just do any kind of tree, really. It doesn't have to be a bonsai tree. Um, I like doing my leaves like this just because it uh, adds some texture. If it's not something like this where it's just a black silhouette, mm -hmm. I like to do multiple colors when I'm doing the same technique. So I'll do a layer of green, tap, 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 tap. And then I'll do a layer of yellow, tap, 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 tap. And I'll take some brown and tap, 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 tap. And it adds more and more dimension as you go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> it's my phone to me. Turn off, turn off <laughs> my notifications. Uh, the bachelor has started, so the bachelor chat is it starts starts arriving. Uh oh. I don't watch it. Um, <laughs> it looks very interesting and funny, and I feel like if I did watch it, I would totally be invested in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have a hard time. I don't like watching people be terrible to each other like that. They're so awful. They're oh, so yeah. awful. They are terrible. It's like it's like if the Real Housewives were a competition. That's yeah. I feel like that's what it would be. I just can't. Nothing against it. If anyone watches it, I know Amber loves it, but I can't. I can't watch it. Myself. I mean, we love it for Nothing those reasons of the of the the train wreck that it is. Yeah, yeah. 
If I'm going to watch a train wreck, I'm going to watch Russian, Russian dash cams on YouTube. <laughs> I do that a lot too. <laughs> it's one of my favorite well, like, things to watch. It's so good. I love it. Um, Jared and I downloaded the Pluto app, like the Pluto TV. Uh -huh. It's it's free, and they have a channel just devoted to um, Fail Army, and oh, wow. it's just like people falling down yeah. and Russian dash cam, and I love it. I just watch it all day. Fail Army is the best. There's also, I love it. I can I can just it's it's my background noise. If I know someone else is getting hurt, I'm okay. <laughs> It's one of the best things to watch before going to bed because you just go, you're just jolly. You're just like, oh, I just laughed. I'm good. Totally. Totally. Um, yeah, Pluto TV is pretty cool. They have a few commercials on there, but it's it's rare that they pop up and they're not obtrusive. And it's free TV and they've got channels for everything. There's a Carol Burnett channel, a Three's Company wow. channel. Yeah, it's a cool place to find some just cool classic stuff. There's a Tosh.0 channel. Every now and then I just want something on in the background where I don't really have to think about it, right? Yeah. I just have it playing. And it's really good to fall asleep too. So you guys can see where I'm building out these branches, letting them live outside. I'm, I'm letting them move to the sides. Reed Cooper says, the what art? The wana? The Bachelor. The Bachelor. Um, I actually got uh, top points last week in my RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> Fantasy League. I was the top scorer for the first time. <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting. Oh, this is second this week in a row. I forgot my picks for The Bachelor. Dang it. Ah, uh, you gotta send an alarm. It just should set an alarm. I'm the, I'm the commissioner, so it's easy for me to remember. But um, uh, Reed says, "I don't know what that is." You don't know what the Bachelor is? Okay, uh, you just start watching it Monday nights after this. It starts at eight, but we usually finish like eight thirty nine, and it's two hours long, so I get to watch the second half. Just after we're done with this, go to ABC. Go watch it on ABC.com. Or no, you have to have an account. Just go watch it on ABC. It's great. <laughs> but like in a terrible way not like in an actually it's great it's beautifully terrible this year Amber and I got to be on an episode of it oh you saw on, on, on Instagram we were in an episode yeah. of it, like two seasons ago mm -hmm. we got to be on camera do you guys were contestants no <laughs> no uh, <laughs> our friend Ryan was a was a marketing person for one of the places they went to and they gave him spots and so he gave us we sat right behind them you tend the contestants uh, at Pirates Dinner Adventure. That's We're right. That's cool. That's so funny. Um, Connie says, I'm so ashamed I missed a whole season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh. Okay, but which season did you miss? Was it 12? In which case, yes, totally. You need to watch that and catch up because it's a good season. Is it 11? Skip it. You don't need it. <laughs> There are some there are some decent queens on there, but you'd be better off just watching those individual drag queens content that they create themselves rather than some of the bullshittery that was going on in season eleven that you don't need in your life. No one needs that. Season eleven was the first season of that show where I was just like, I don't know that I can watch this anymore because these are terrible people. <laughs> Not all of them. Like I said, there's some redeeming people on there, but it makes the people who aren't make it really difficult to watch. But I feel like every reality show has that, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Rich Cooper says, are you paying me? No, I'm not going to pay you to watch it. You were asking. <laughs> Ooh, you're on. I'll pay you. <laughs> I'll pay you in paintings. You know what? Yeah. You go watch it, and for an, a certain amount of num Mondays from here on end, we'll... Do we'll get together and we'll teach you how to paint something? Yeah, that sounds good. For la for I'm sure we the, can figure something out. And a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Art, you could probably cheat on this and find a, a leaf brush or something, or maybe like I some just... cool. What did you do? I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
There's so many cool textured brushes on Procreate. It'd be hard not to. Yeah. Nice. I love that. Nice job. Thanks. I didn't fall behind. Um, I actually got up a little bit ahead today. You did it. You did it. Did you finish your Patronus from last week? No. <laughs> I need to go oh. do that. I need to do that. You know what? Since um, I'm sitting at home, I should do that when I'm sitting at home. Yeah. Just like chilling in front of the TV. I'll do that sometimes. So just kind of sketch and doodle. No shame. I actually really liked what you were doing. I was laughing last week because it was it was so far behind. <laughs> but you're also you're running a show at the same time. So Yeah, we had a lot of stuff there. going on last week. Yeah, I don't blame you. Check out um, what Connie and Ryan are doing. Look at that. Yeah, let's see where they're at on their trees. Yeah. Nice. Looking good. Looking good. See Connie starting to stipple a bit on there. Hi, Connie. And then uh, Ryan disappeared. I think yeah. he, he's focused heavily on his branches. He doesn't like being on camera. <laughs> really? No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, was it on chat time last week or something? He was actually like behind a fence, like Wilson from Home Improvement. Yeah, that's his usual spot on chat time. Oh my god, it was so funny. I just saw that little fence down there and I just giggling to myself because it's just so ridiculous. So you guys can see I'm working section at a time, but occasionally if you have branches that are close to each other, once you do their individual sections, feel free to bring them closer together. Tap it out a little bit inside to bring them together. You still want them to kind of speak on their own, so it just doesn't look like one big mass of leaves, but just little by little. Um, Connie missed 12, saw up through 11. Okay, so you just missed 12. 12 is actually really, it's it's pretty good. I, I enjoyed 12, there's some really great queens on there. Um, trying to think, uh, one of our friends, uh, or, or you may know uh, Darius, Darius Rose from Disney. Mm. Um, he's on season 12. He's Jackie yeah. Cox. Oh, that sounds familiar. Name sounds yeah. familiar. Probably do, yeah. Yeah. He was uh, primarily parades. Mm. Um, he did a lot of special events too. He's Stormtrooper every now and then. Let me look him up. But yeah, Jackie Cox was on there. She did really well. There's some really strong queens from season 12. So that's definitely worth a watch. It was also pre-COVID, so it was interesting to see how they made that transition toward the end um, with the finale and everything. But that's where we're at with uh, Drag Race UK right now. They actually made the announcement this latest episode, during the episode, mm. that the, the COVID pandemic was forcing them to stop filming. So I don't know what they're going to do. I'm, I'm excited to oh, see. Wow. Yeah. Um, Reed Cooper, Jackie Cox worked for Disney. Yeah. Um, used to work for Disney in the entertainment department, was one of our parade dancers. Did a lot of stuff. He was there for a long time. He actually, I think he started at, um, I think he started at Innovations. Oh yeah? Yeah, when he first got there and then um, went into parades, if I remember correctly. Um, But yeah, Jackie's wonderful. Darius is wonderful, but Jackie's also a lot of fun. He's also the first uh, Ru RuPaul's Drag Race queen that I actually knew. Like, I had seen some queens before at shows, be like, oh, I remember that queen. I used to see them in LA, or that one used to perform in Orange County all the time. But Jackie was the first one. I was like, oh my God, I actually know that person really well. And they're competing on a TV I mean, show yeah. and it's bizarre. <laughs> Andrew says, oh my God, I had no idea. I remember Darius. Yeah. Darius is such a sweetheart. It's exciting to see him succeed in that way too, because he, mm -hmm. he went to school he went to school for theater specifically. He was always a theater. He and I used to do shows together. We were in a production mm -hmm. of West Side Story together like years ago. Um, 
so it's just it's funny to see that and just to see your friends succeed in that way. It just mm -hmm. it's it's neat. Yeah, it's funny the the number of people that we saw that we know either knew or halfway knew at Disney that went on to do good, cool stuff. It was nice to see that yeah. people really actually made it out and did something cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, like it was weird. Very... It, was, it was weird um, when Miranda Sings got really huge, and like uh, that was yeah. really cool to see her. Because we we used to. Uh, did you get to work with her? You you left before she started working with us, right? I left. Yeah. You left. Yeah. And she and because we used to work with her, she was in our show with us. And then right after she left, poof, she be she became Miranda Sings. Because we used to watch her videos at at at, at work when she like come and show us when she first started. Like, watch these things. Right. We'd watch them. We thought it was, like, it was super funny. And then she That's left so Disney funny. and they got and it blew up. That was pretty cool. Good for her. Good for her. Yeah, I had left before that, unfortunately. But yeah, there's an there's a awesome handful of people who've gone on to do great things. I mean, look at you guys. This this whole crew, the Perception crew, you guys all decided to do something on your do own and yeah. make it. I love that. Keep doing our creative. It's so stuff. inspiring. It just goes to show you, like, you don't have to wait for the job to come to you. You just kind of have to create it yourself and and do it. Do do the thing, as yeah. uh, Chris Hardwick always says. Do the thing. Do the thing you always talk about, but never actually get around to doing it. Exactly. Speaking of which, Jared and I just recorded our first podcast last night. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was so fun. We had a really good time. We're going to load it up sometime this week. But yeah, I can't tell you how many times over the last like three years, he and I were like, we just had a great conversation. Why is this not on a podcast? Because people would probably enjoy listening to us talk. I mean, who knows? They probably, who really knows? But you'd never know unless you put it out there. Um, yes, go watch season 12. It's fun. It's a really good season. It's enjoyable. Um, share the link in the Discord. I'd love to listen in. Of course! I will definitely do that. Um, we're not up yet, but I will once once we get up and going. I just designed the logo for it. We're, we're calling it Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> the Mr. and Mrs. show because Jared is often a Mrs. in drag. It's kind of like, um, I designed it kind of like um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mm -hmm. It's feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like it. I might add a few more branches here and there, but I don't know that I'm going to do too much more to this guy. There's something very clean and simple about bonsai trees that I love. Mm -hmm. I can't keep them alive, but I can paint them. <laughs> Feel free to add a few more little tuft of tufts, t u t t u f t s tufts of branches here and there, just to kind of loosen it up a bit. Just so it doesn't look like cotton balls hanging off sticks. And then you'll also notice there's quite a bit of grunge around the, the, uh, the painting. If you look up on the top right, it's got a little bit of a texture, especially with the black. You don't have to do that. I think that's just like a, a filter that the uh, original artist had used. But it's totally up to you if you want to. I think I'm going to add a little bit more here, though, to find the head a bit.
There you go. That looks a little less creepy. <laughs> I mean, you guys know, I'm not great with people either. I think, I think um, someone had mentioned in the chat too, like, oh, I'm so glad I skipped this one. I'm terrible at people. Guys, I am too. People is hard. You, yeah, the only way you get better is just to keep doing it. I've always been bad at people. Just not my thing. Yeah. But I like doing it. I like trying it. Uh, option delete says there's quite a bit of grunge around my face. Oh, like uh, in, on your painting? Yeah. It's a nice way to kind of hide some of those things that you don't love too. Um, but what you can also do is, you guys know I love a good splatter painting. <laughs> Any chance to kind of make a mess and splatter a little bit. So I'm going to mix up a little touch of watery black and see if I like this. I'm just going to mix up some black paint with some water. I don't want too much. You don't want your brush like dripping wet. But let's see what this does. I might hate it. Let's see. Oh, no, I like it. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> you never know. Just put it on another layer. And if you don't like it, just delete the layer. <laughs> I'll just put another canvas in front of it. <laughs> You'll never know. Um, yeah, you never know with this kind of stuff. But it's fun to try. And if it doesn't turn out great, you just paint over it. Oh, yeah, I like this. Check that out. Some nice, like, grungy... Now it looks like it's spray painted on there. Yeah, I like that. Koi says, love that. Just try it out. Yeah, you just try it. I mean, if it doesn't work, who cares? It's just, we're having fun and flinging paint everywhere. Look, I just learned that Corey's middle name is Lynn. Now when you get mad at her, you can say, Corey Lynn! <laughs> 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 Oh, I love this even more now. Yes. That looks good. Now it looks like it's been like spray painted on the back of a wall or or on the gi itself, like it's uh, screen printed or something. I'm gonna add a little bit more on the white just to grunge it up a little bit more, not too much. I'm gonna try that. Especially on the edges. and then a little bit more around the body. I have a little spot there that I don't love. So I'm gonna grab my towel real quick while it's still wet. Take the corner of it and just dab it to take that extra paint off. And then later on, once that's dried, I'm just gonna paint over it with orange, you'll never see it. I might do that up here too. This looks a little, a little too much. Yes, I love that. Cool. So is my crane form perfect? No, but it's a cool, uh, cool bonsai tree and it's got like the illusion of the crane in there. Um, if you want to do this again, you can actually take like a picture on online and trace it out first before you paint it if you don't want to do it freehand. Um, or if you're doing it digitally, like art, you can put a, a, a layer of the image on there and just kind of trace out the structure of it. And then once you've got that like armature framework of it, just paint on top. It's a good idea. Yeah, give yourself a base. Don't be afraid to to give yourself a crutch every now and then, especially as you're just starting off and learning yeah. new um, new tools, new techniques. As you learn, give yourself give yourself some leeway and try something new. Uh, Reed Cooper says, "I'm gonna have to try this again. This did not come out well." Hey, that's okay. Like sometimes it doesn't. 
Mandalorian. Um, but like, it's it's okay. Like like you said, I'm just gonna try it again later. Yeah. This painting took. I mean, now that you've done it already, the next time you do it, it's probably gonna take an hour, if that. Um, and you just you learn every time you do it. Every time you try something new. Um, Reed Cooper says, I don't like it. I posted it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do know that Reed, you're very critical of your own work. Sometimes you post stuff that you don't like and it actually looks yeah. really cool. But well, good for I you. trust your judgment. And we appreciate that you went through the whole thing. You finished it and then you posted it. Yeah. That's, that's it's all cool. process. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for playing along. Now go watch The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a fun one. I love painting trees. Trees are just fun and chill. I also like that this is square. This is really cool. I might give this to my sister because I know she likes yeah. um, Cobra Kai so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> my sister loves squares. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so stupid. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, so before we go, do you want to do a quick little uh, blurb for the partner push? Yeah, so we're still good doing our partner push, so you guys know. Uh, we still need people to uh, show up every Tuesday. I mean, every show, obviously. We'd love to have you there. But Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday nights for the next six weeks or so we really need people there we want to keep our averages up fridays are are the ones that we're struggling a little bit we're just kind of reaching it just barely and we kind of want to play the safe game and, and go over it so that we don't have to do this again uh so we'd love for you guys to be there if you guys can, if you can't watch but you want to lurk and you just want to have it in the background um, make sure that you don't mute the tab you just turn down the, your computer or whatever device because if you mute the tab your view won't count uh, but yeah, come hang out. Friday's nights are super fun. They're super silly. Um, and we'd love to have you there. And we it's appreciate weird that you guys. Friday, too. It's weird that Friday's slow because Friday is so good with um, exhaustive debaters and trash trapeze. Like, mm -hmm. you'd think those would be just really fun, strong nights. Um, yeah. But yes, please join, join, join. And, and then also, I, I say this every time, but set, set an alarm on your phone, set a reminder. Mm -hmm. I have an alarm set for every one of the shows to remind me to, hey, just put it on. Even if you're busy at that time, just put it on in the background, like Art said. Yeah. Just make sure it's not on mute. Now's the time to just kind of put it on, help out, lurk if you have to. Yeah. And then after that, it won't matter. We can do as many shows with as many people as we want, and it will not make a difference because we only have to get part and then of we'll, we'll all go back to Twitch at that point, right? Yeah. So thinking, or is it simultaneous? Uh, I think we're going to primarily go back to Twitch, but we might keep trying out YouTube for some things. Just maybe. I mean, why not? Why not? Just see, see how we, okay. we can kind of grow both sins. All right, well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Robert, for hanging out with us. Um, Always. We will be back tomorrow with uh, Gaming with Andrew at 2 p.m. And Andrew's back to doing some games. Uh, Yay. And, and then Solon's Legacy tomorrow night. And you guys can continue on with that. Well, thanks everyone for joining us, and we'll we'll uh, paint later. Oh, we still don't have a sign off. We don't have a sign off. We'll, we'll send a paint you later. Perception. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs>